Recording in progress. We are now being joined by Leah McCourt. We'll begin with a few questions from our media. Gabriel, your line is now live. Hello, Leah. Hello. So, hi. So obviously, um, coming off a fantastic victory over another, you know, up and coming prospect. Uh, going into this fight now, what is your biggest goal in terms of making a statement in the ever-growing featherweight division? Um, every fight you want to make a statement and put on a good performance, and that's the same as this fight. You know, I'm coming, had a great camp, um, feeling good, and just want to uh, perform on the night. That's always the goal, and it's a big, big uh, platform. It's so amazing to be here in London, so excited, so feel so blessed to be in this position and I um, uh, just can't wait to, to, to fight night. Your profile has obviously grown doing the work at the desk for Bellator and then of course uh, getting a big victory, like I said. Have you felt just a growth in your profile, whether it be in social media, whether it be in media requests overall? Um, I suppose I'm kind of, from the, my even my amateur career, I always did a lot of media. Did a lot, there was a lot of a um, kind of media interest. I think it was because I'm a just you know I'm quite relatable. People can see I have a daughter. I am a mum. I you know I work hard and I you know had a successful amateur career and people have just kept following that. So it's kind of been constant throughout. And obviously it's great. It's great. It's great for me and, and puts me in a good position. Like co-main event at Wembley. It's just. You know, I've only had six professional fights and to be given this platform, it's um, definitely a dream come true. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Lee, uh, I wonder if we could just start with the uh, the fight itself. Uh, you know, Jessica Borga is one and one in Bellator. She may not have the most imposing record, but all of her wins have come via finish. Just give us your thoughts on the matchup coming up. Yeah, I think Jessica's a tough opponent. You know, it's in female MMA, the records do always reflect the ability of the, the fighter and she has got great finishes over good opponents and her losses are to good opponents, the tough opponents. She's quite similar stylistically to me. She likes to close the distance, put it against the cage and take it to the ground. And, um, you know, it's an interesting fight for me. I think it's going to be quite technical. Who's going to... Um, bring out the best, I think she could, she, she could bring out the best in me and I, you know, whatever we get in those kinds of position, clinch positions, you know, you make one mistake on your, on, you're on your back, but I just think I'll be one step ahead and, and that's my game, that's what I'm used to and um, I feel like I've had a really strong camp and it will, it could be a tough fight, but I, you know, I'll, I'll always come out on top. You mentioned only having six fights, but it should also be said that you're on a five-fight win streak and it'll be six if you do get past Borga. You're ranked fifth in the weight class right now. Have you thought about where this win could put you? Because when you look at the women ahead of you, um, you know, Kat seems like she's likely for the next title shot. And theoretically, you could be up there next year. Um, I just look at the next fight. It's, I'm just always looking at the next fight, the next opponent. And it's never like... I don't think how many, it's going to be inevitable. I'm going to be fighting for the title. And I always say, you know, it was my, I was an amateur world champion. It's my destiny to be a professional world champion. But I, I don't look at like, there's a number of fights that I should have. I look at it when I can bring out the best of myself in the cage. And I'll know when I'm ready. I'll know when, when, that, when the time is right. I have only had six professional fights and I'm, every fight's an acid test. I'm fighting on big, big shows, big platforms and massive pressure on my shoulders and I'm just trying to find my rhythm and, and bring out the skill set that I have on the night. Mark. Leah, how are you doing? It's Mark starting here at BBC Sport and Belfast. Are you all right? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm good. Leah, just wanted to come back. You, you mentioned there about, about your, your daughter and your role as a mother. Um, I was just wondering, I saw your, your tweet earlier on about the, the parent-teacher meeting. Um, <laughs> how, how, how did it go? Oh, it's so good. I actually actually made me cry. <laughs> the, the teacher said that she was such a, a lovely girl and had such a nice way about her and spirit and nice to other kids. And that's like all I could ask for. I don't care if she gets everything wrong or everything right. In her, in her, I just care about how she is as a person. And she's so special. And, and the teacher just reinforced that like they always do. Like she really is a special girl. Yeah, there's not much better than hearing 
somebody telling you how, how great your kids are so there's not yeah. um but i suppose you you, you, you know you, you don't mind speaking about your role as a mother and you know you know and, and, and the importance of your daughter does she do you, do you think your daughter maybe gets the, the you know does she understand exactly what mommy's way off to what mommy's way off to do um she's definitely used to me obviously doing fight camps and fighting but you know i'm just really looking forward to next week when i can just spend time with her and probably go take her away at half term you know i have to sacrifice so much time away from her for my training um like any working mom has to we all have to work and provide for our kids so it's not like i'm special and other moms don't find it hard as well um but yeah she she, she gets it and i think she, she'd prefer me to be at home with her but when she's older she'll understand why <laughs> why i was training so hard all the time sean go ahead Hi, Leah. Sean Sheehan here from uh, Severe Med. Just, just two questions. The first one I want to ask you is, uh, you spoke there uh, a second ago about, uh, you know, the, the ranking and fighting someone maybe who's three and three uh, and maybe not as highly ranked as you. How do you reckon that as someone yourself who is only six fights uh, into your career? Like, how do you reckon between being ranked number five and being, you know, maybe one fight away from Cyborgs, one of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. We'd only been six fights in and maybe needing a good few more fights before, never mind anyone else, but before yourself, you're at, you know, a, a real top, uh, you know, stage of your career where you're ready for the absolute best in the world. Yeah, like I totally agree, you know, and it's, it, that's a difficulty with women's divisions. There's not all these fighters that I can build my record with. Do you know, I, every fight I've had has been on, a massive show or a massive stage or you know they're all they're all tough opponents and that's you know obviously I get the benefits of that of being in this position and fighting and coming an event but at the same time it's like every fight's an acid test so I, I definitely I know when I will be ready for the title fight and I know that what I want to again I'm going to say it's not about how many fights I need it's when I can bring out the best of me in the fight and and when I can relax and show and and flow and just feel comfortable, which again I'm, I only had six professional fights, so um yeah it's a difficult position to be in, but again I'd fight anyone so I'd fight in the car park if they were families. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I just ask you as well about Northern Irish MMA. It's a really great time for Northern Irish MMA. As we know, James is going to be headlining the card coming up. Paul Hughes is a huge headline of fight as well. John McCulligan is a champion over in Cage Warriors as well. And you've been, you know, obviously a, a great proponent for uh, for uh, MMA up the north of Ireland as well. How proud are you to be with that kind of group of people? And, you know, in the big fight in, in a call man event here as well this weekend, uh, how proud are you to be a, a, a Northern Irish woman doing well, like all the rest of the guys as well? Yeah, do you like there? Like I, Joe, Joe was my main training partner for years, and I'm best friends with his wife. And it's I was so happy to see him win the, the title. I was so delighted. And then Paul Hughes is unbelievable. I've trained with him. Like do you know, all these guys, we've all came up together, all training together in the same clubs, sparring. We all go about different gyms, and and um, they've definitely all motivated me. You know, I watch Joe's fight and Paul's fight, and you just look at the, the level and the skill level that they bring on the, the night. And Joe, Joe's always been a big inspiration to me, you know, his his work ethic and, and, and how he can perform and show up and his, and his mindset. So, so proud of those boys as well. It's just great to see that, yeah, the North is, is flying high in MMA. Santiago. Hi, Leah. Greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. I spoke to you after your beautiful win against Janae Harding, and I asked you where you would like to fight next, and you answered Dublin or London. That wish is granted. How much does it mean for you to be in the European time zone again? This makes your fight week routine way better, right? Yeah, so much, so much nicer, so much more relaxed, and oh, it's just so exciting to be part of the Bellator London card. You know, it's the first. Bellator card back in London, Ireland since the pandemic. And I was meant to fight in London back in May. And um, th this was the first card that was canceled in the pandemic, I think. And um, definitely, again, feels like a dream come true. You know, it's, um, it's I feel so fortunate to be in this position and to be um, on such a big fight night. Like I, I'm so excited for MVP and Leeway rematch too. I remember watching the first one, Never mind fighting just before them. So it's, it's special, it's gonna be a special night. Coral. Hi, Leah. How are you? Hi. 
Good. I, I was just wondering, what's your confidence like going into this fight? Uh, it's you're on the co-main card. It's a huge event for you. So, uh, how is your confidence going into this fight? Um, I'm quite. I, I'm. I'm always confident. I always believe in myself. You know, I'm just gonna. I've had a great, great camp. I. It comes down to the the work I've done and the, and the hours and hours and hours that I've done in the gym and. And that will show it always does show on the night you know you can do whatever you want outside the cage and but i believe i work harder and put more in than anyone and it, you know it always shows shines through um i feel like i'm going to be one step ahead in every position you know whether it's clinching striking no matter where it goes i have that uh, experience in deep water in the gym i i you know every, every week in week out and i always am gonna um just believe that i'll get the win it's always my mindset that no matter what position I'm in no matter who I'm fighting you can find a way to win and that'll be you know, it's, it's a black you don't know what's gonna happen you could go in there and act like a totally different fighter but I just have to adapt and I'm, I'm used to fighting different styles so I'm really confident Luke Kelly go ahead hey Lee Luke from Empire Universe podcast how are you I'm good thanks uh first off how has how has your fight cam gone yeah um had a great camp um, pretty injury free for a change and been back with doing a lot of work with my head grappling coach Sebastian Torres um, kind of going back to my my A game what I like doing and just really leveling up in that, in that area you know you can't progress in every single area massively every camp you just have to focus on bits at a time and of just again just trying to improve every day and, and piece everything together and make it flow and I've, I felt this is probably one of the, the best camps I've had in a long time. You know, like you, you spoke very highly about Jessica. It, would you say that she has been the, the most dangerous opponent that you've had so far? I don't know. Like, it, it, I suppose your next opponent's always your most danger, dangerous opponent. You know, I fought some some top girls like Manon Farrows and doing amazing in the UFC. And I've fought Olympic, two time Olympic judokas. I fought you know, all, all different people stylistically, and I, I'll not know until I get in there, until the, you know, the fight happens, but she, yeah, she, all these girls are tough. It's gonna to be, every fight's gonna be, you know, a test and nothing's gonna be easy at this this level. Mark, go ahead. Hey, how you doing? You, you talked earlier on there about um, the success of Northern Ireland in, in MMA. Um, there's also been a lot of sort of success generally for, for women in sport, for Irish women in sport recently, you know, Kelly Harrington at the Olympics, Beth the Firth, Luna McGuire at the at the golf, and obviously Katie Taylor generally generally in the boxing. I mean, does that sort of uh, inspire you that you sort of can take your your place among among those fellow female sports women? Yeah, it's great to see so many um, Northern Irish females doing so well, and Katie, you know, uh, all over Ireland, you know, like there's so many great female athletes and it's great to be a part of that movement and hopefully inspiring younger girls to to like to, to look up to these girls and, and that, that, that to, to want to be athletes and, and they can see that there is opportunity there's careers you know going down this route rather than the kind of trend that is you know kind of pushing young girls away from that at the minute so i'd love to see all the great females um being so successful and getting good media coverage and hopefully inspiring the next generation yeah, that, that 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 profile you've you've all got is just is, is raising more and more all the time, isn't it? Yeah, I, I feel so. I feel like it is, and I feel like you know, there's more interest in female um athletes and female sport, and you know, people are giving them the recognition they deserve. We'll take a couple more here, David. David, go ahead. All right, we'll move on here. Kobe, go ahead. Hi, Leah. Kobe from the Pro Sports Podcasters in Canada. Good to meet you. Hi. Now, you're facing Jessica Borga, and all of her professional wins have come in the first round. Do you expect her to come out extremely aggressive as a result of that? Um, I, do, I, I don't know. Her last fight, she didn't come out too aggressive. I think she'll probably be wary again of my clinch game. Maybe... Um, all, it does depend on the night, doesn't it? It just depends what way she's going to come out. But I, whether she's aggressive or whether she's not, I'll be, I'm, I've got, I'm prepared for both. 
Bobby, go ahead. Hi, Leah. Bobby from MMA UK. Uh, so, obviously, this is a huge opportunity for you. You're going to be in the co-main event, not just that, in London as well, which is going to be huge. You'll definitely have the crowd behind you. How much are you looking forward to that walkout? And sort of how are you going to go about dealing with, you know, the pressure of having all those people supporting you in the crowd? Um, it's to be honest, like whether there's ten thousand in the arena or nobody, like the only focus is my is my opponent. And I I can take in the crowd after the event. And obviously Dublin's different when you walk out in Dublin. It's just crazy. But I definitely um I'm used to it. Every fight I've had has been on big stages. I, I don't know what it's like not having all this craziness, you know, and pressure surrounding it. So um but this time I really want to enjoy it and take in this experience and just enjoy the position I'm in and Jim always like laser like focus on the night I just go into the zone uh I'll definitely you know take it in afterwards celebrating it's great to best of luck on the night thanks and last one here Mark go ahead Yeah, Leo, just 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 a final one. Um, just I suppose a touch again on, on the preparations for the fight. I know there's maybe some complications with or some challenges in the preparations for your last fight. Has it been a bit bit smoother this time? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you know, being my my camp has been consistent this this time. I have had less injuries and a lot more mat time, and I feel a lot more comfortable and definitely prepared to go into this so, you know I, I still showed up and fought in that last fight but definitely the, the circumstances weren't ideal all right that wraps it up here thank you very much for the time leah and good luck on friday thank you